and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Gravita India Limited Q1 FI24 Earnings Conference Call hosted by MK Global Financial Services. We have with us today Mr. Yogesh Malhotra, Whole Time Director and CEO and Mr. Sunil Kansal, Chief Financial Officer. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions at the end of today's presentation. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Sabri Hazarika from MK Global Financial Services. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of MK Global, I welcome you all to the Q1 FY24 uh, post earnings conference call of Gravita India Limited. Uh, we have the senior management of the company led by Mr. Yogesh Malhotra, whole time director and CEO, uh, Mr. Vijay Kumar Parik, executive director, Mr. Naveen Prakash Sharma, executive director, and Mr. Sunil Kansal, chief financial officer. Uh, so today's session would be a brief on the results by the management, and then we will follow uh, with the question and answer round. So over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Sapri. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our Q1 FY24 earnings call. I believe you have had an opportunity to review the earnings presentation and financial results that were uploaded on the stock exchanges. Before opening the floor for questions, I will provide a brief overview on the major highlights of the quarter. I am delighted to share that Gravita India has delivered strong performance in uh, Q1 FY24. Before we delve into the results, we would like to share some strategic highlights and project updates. I am pleased to announce that pure lead of 99.98% purity and above, produced by our Fagi uh, Jaipur plant, has been impaneled as an approved lead brand deliverable against the MCX lead futures contract. Pure lead manufactured by the Chittur plant of the company is already at MCX impaneled product. This will provide Gravita with an additional platform for hedging, better inventory management, and price transparency in the domestic market. I would also like to highlight the fact that MCX maintains a global and stringent quality approach, which is at par with the international exchanges. This reaffirms the fact that the products manufactured at Gravita's plants adhere to global standards, thereby ensuring excellence in every aspect of production. Gravita has expanded its existing capacity of battery recycling units situated at Chittur, Andhra Pradesh. The capacity has been increased by 26,440 metric ton per annum to 64,640 metric ton per annum. The CAPEX undertaken stands at around rupees 21 crore. This is funded through internal accruals. Additionally, it's worth noting that this plant leverages the potential of domestic scrap, which is abundantly available from prominent telecom players, UPS OEMs, IT, ITS, as well as waste scrap from the automobile sector in their respective markets. Gravita has also secured contracts to efficiently collect Pan India scrap, enabling the company to serve OEM customers in South India and facilitate exports via the nearby Chennai port, thereby optimizing logistical costs. With this expanded capacity, the company aims to fortify its position in the South Indian market, including the Southeast Asian market as well. Gravita Tanzania Limited, a step-down subsidiary of Gravita, uh, situated in Tanzania, East Africa, has started commercial production and recycling of waste rubber. It has an annual capacity of around 3,000 metric ton per annum in phase one, which is expected to go up to 6,000 metric ton per annum in phase two. The capex incurred for phase one is rupees 3.86 crore, again funded through internal accruals. This newly established recycling facility will not only result in cost reduction, but also contribute to decrease the car carbon footprints. The process of rubber recycling produces pyrolysis oil, which will be utilized by the company for in-house consumption as an alternative energy source in recycling battery and aluminum scrap. This move aligns with the company's commitment to sustainable practices and environmentally friendly operations. 
Let's now discuss the operational performance. Coming to capacity expansion, as of 24th July 2023, Gravita has grown by 22% from March 2023 and expanded its total capacity to 2.78 lakh metric ton per annum. We are confident that we will reach 4.25 lakh metric ton per annum capacity by financial year, financial year 26. This will include both existing as well as new verticals. The company has witnessed a volume growth of 18% in Q1 FY24 on a year-on-year -year basis. Lead volume increased by 18%. Aluminium volume grew by 63% on a year-on-year -year basis to 29,287 tons and 5,396 tons respectively. We are maintaining a healthy order book of six, more than 60,000 metric ton per annum. Our, our, a reminder of our CAPEX plans, Gravita is committed to expanding its capacity and hence is expecting to incur a CAPEX of more than 650 crore by financial year 26 for its existing as well as new verticals. CAPEX expected for existing and new verticals is approximately rupees 400 crores and rupees 250 crores respectively. Moving on to Q1 financial year 24 financial results. At consolidated level, revenue for the quarter increased by 21% to Rs. 703 crores on a year-on-year -year basis and showed a drop of 6% on a Q on Q basis. 49% of the revenue in Q1 FY24 came from value-added products aligning with our vision of achieving 50% revenues from this category. On a year-on-year -year basis, adjusted EBITDA increased by 24% to Rs. 80 crores. EBITDA margins improved 11.4% and the company continued to maintain strong margins. Gravita reported a consolidated PAT of Rs. 52 crores with a 22% growth year-on-year. -year. PAT margins remained steady at 7.4%. Overall, the company performed significantly well on a year-on-year -year basis but faced a slight drop on Q, on Q basis. This can be attributed to a drop in aluminum and plastic prices. Additionally, the disruption caused by the Bifurjoy cyclone had a significant impact on the operation of our major lead plant in Mundra, leading to adverse effects on volume growth and margins. Furthermore, the recent launch of our two new aluminium plants has been in stabilization phase and is yet to operate at full capacity. At standalone level, revenue stood at rupees 654 crores, showing an increase of, of 6% on a year on year basis. Habita for this quarter stood at rupees 60 crores demonstrating a significant improvement from quarter one of last year. EBITDA margins stood strong at 9%. Similarly, PAT showed a significant increase of 136% on a year-on-year -year basis to Rs. 38.72 crores. PAT margins stood strong at 6%. I would like to emphasize once again that we are steadfastly progressing towards our ambitious vision 2027, which involves diversifying into new verticals, achieving robust financial growth, and expanding our business in non-light uh, segments. Moreover, we have full confidence that, that by year financial year 26, we will successfully reduce our net working capital cycle from 83 days as of March 2023 to 65 days, thereby significant, significantly enhancing our operational efficiency. That's all from my end. I would now request to open the floor for questions and answers. Thank you. And over to you, Sabri. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Rahul Bangadia from Lucky Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Sir, uh, first question is, uh, could you give us a rough sense or your approximation of how much volume would you have lost because of disruption in the operations in Mundra? Uh, the volume we lost is approximately 10 to 12 days, which is... Uh, approximately 1,500 tons uh, for this, because of this Vipa Joy impact. 
okay okay that is about 1500 tons okay uh and uh, uh second question was you had a one off in the form of uh, esop uh, being kind of reversed or something like that that has got got into the other income 11 crores yeah so basically uh, we made a provision earlier uh, in the in the form of uh, impact of this employee benefit scheme uh, which we brought but uh, later we realized that we we don't need this provision because we have uh, already dismantled we are in the process of dismantling the trust and giving the benefits of this uh, scheme uh, slightly earlier to what it is planned so uh, but now we have taken a provision of uh, giving that benefit in the in the employee benefit so so if you see the benefit employee benefit expenses is slightly uh, higher on this side so on the one side it is a mm, provision reversal which is showing in the uh, in, in other income but on the other side the impact is that we have taken a provision of uh, incentives which we are going to give to the employee so against that uh, benefit which they are losing so it is a compensation so uh, we we are considering this uh, reversal as a part of the operational because the other impact is coming in the uh, employee benefit expenses so uh, for us uh, we have taken it is in the adjusted abita because it's operational part of uh, the business so this 11 crore uh, income that you have accounted for in the other income part of it how much would you have part of, uh, put in the employee benefit expenses or in any other expenses in this quarter itself yeah so approximately 8 crore uh, we have already uh, considered in the employee benefit of uh, expenses of this quarter okay so 11 against 8 net 3 is what you is what you got in slightly yes. but benefited uh, to that extent essentially correct 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 and that is why we have put it even this uh, 11 crores in the operational part because corresponding cost you have also recognized there yes 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 okay okay uh, yeah that's about it for now i'll come back for more later thank you so much sir sure. thank you the next question is from the line of gaurav gandhi from groli trail capital please go ahead yes thanks for the opportunity and congratulations on the good set of numbers uh, my first question is sir uh, how do you collect crab in india i mean uh, do we have any contracts with the companies handling municipal waste and also do we have any large centers in big cities for collection of household scraps do we have any kind of uh, such, you know uh, uh, no center collection centers for collecting scraps Yeah. In, in fact, in case of uh, domestic collection, uh, our our collection plan uh, executes in three ways. One is we are having a, a pairing the contract with Amrata Batteries, uh, from which we are collecting the batteries from on pairing basis. Secondly, we are also very closely working with the, some of the PROs. Uh, those are those are collecting the battery e-waste, plastic, and many other commodities as a waste, and out of those waste. we are collecting the plastic and uh, and lead scrap from those companies like so like so uh, sambo karo and other companies uh, third thing is that we are also having our contracts with uh, it companies like so tcs like so action chore and other companies from which we are collecting the batteries on friendly basis whether those offices are uh, located in sjs or in uh, domestic type areas thirdly we are also collecting the batteries from institutions like so of jindal jindal group aditya bala group adani group so from the different different locations of uh, locations of uh, the factory plants factory locations we are collecting these batteries okay and uh, do you think this uh, municipal waste management companies like antony waste handling and all uh, can we benefit from these companies also for our fair collection no. No. no because uh, because this municipal waste doesn't uh, collect these batteries because these batteries will be largely either will be auctioned or it will be sold through different different locations no one will hand over these batteries to the municipal for municipal waste okay okay and uh, my second question is to get more clarity on this epr uh, topic sir as for epr policy is the producer gets responsible uh, if the producer gets responsible for uh, recycling does it mean that for example you know if whatever excites excited batteries or amara raja sell they are responsible to collect and uh, you know recycle all the batteries and if yes 
what happens to let's say if the excited batteries are collected by us i mean do we hand over uh, that scrap to them or how, how will it work yes you are correct that as per epr policy they have to either collect back or recycle themselves or they can buy recycle lead or they have to take epr certificate like even it is applied to the import of new batteries also uh, so okay and if it is target yeah, yeah. Uh, to collect the battery over a period of time so that's how this will epr will process and there will be penalty if the epr is not done and they can even create recycling partner under epr oh. As, so in, in that case sir partner to amaraja amaraja sir sir in that case uh, whether uh, will it impact our margins if we partner with them in future you know uh, will it impact the margin so basically uh, this is going to work as a tolling arrangement uh, which is currently in place so of course if you talk about evita margins that will be lower but uh, there will be no working capital requirement in such a case so therefore the overall roc will be better in this case which we are already doing so if you look at it most of the, uh, the domestic uh, procurement that we are doing is uh, through this arrangement only uh, so overall even though the uh, the evita margins would be a little lower the overall uh, profitability or the roc would be much higher as compared to when we we buy it from uh, uh, domestic market no okay all right all right that's it sir fine thank you i'll get back to you Thank you. The next question is from the line of Gunjan Kapra from Neveshai. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, uh, firstly, thank you so much for the opportunity. Sir, I wanted to understand how does the margin scenario work in plastic and aluminium segment because they remain quite a vo quite volatile. Like right? this quarter, it was around four percent for aluminium, whereas it was it was and previously it was. So, so how does that scenario work in aluminium and plastic? What kind of stable margins can we expect in this uh, segment? And if I wanted to understand the mechanism of it, so margin in case of uh, operational margin in case of uh, plastic and aluminium is like in case of plastic, it is ten uh, rupees uh, per kg, ten uh, uh, rupees per kg, um, uh, but. Uh, EBITDA margin for 10 rupees per kg, and in case of aluminium, it is because the, in case of aluminium, it is mostly business outside India where we sold uh, slightly cheaper, so margin is in the range of uh, 17, 18 rupees per kg EBITDA margin. So, but uh, there is a slightly fluctuative margins because of uh, in case of plastic and aluminium, we are not hedged fully, so we work on a model where we uh, keep on buying the scrap. And we keep on selling the um, finished goods against that. So you keep the stable inventory, uh, which uh, so but uh, sometimes when the, mar the the market prices are going down or going up, so that time the margins are according uh, to the inventory gain or inventory losses, the margin is going up or down. So that's the reason because we are not fully held uh, in this model, and there is no mechanism also available of hedging this uh, plastic and aluminium. But going forward, we are looking for a mechanism for aluminium specifically. Uh, we are uh, entering into uh, a, a, uh, arrangement where MCX is going to be uh, available platform for uh, because we are dealing into aluminium alloys. So uh, on MCX, there will be a platform for uh, dealing or hedging or uh, uh, giving the deliveries also uh, for aluminium alloy uh, in future. So we are working on that. So hopefully. Um, uh, that uh, arrangement is going to be developed by the MCX uh, with the Ministry of uh, Finance. So th they are arranging that. So after this, uh, there will be stable margins on the aluminum side. But still, we are finding for solution for uh, plastic also similarly, where we can hatch uh, the margins uh, for the future. Okay, got it. So second question I had is that you have already spoken about the total capacity expansion that you plan to do it over the years, but I wanted to know that from today and what, what is the expansion that is happening in, uh, apart from lead and other metals, I mean, I wanted to understand rubber, what's the expansion plan for FI20, from FI23 to 26, how much is the incremental capacity for 
uh, rubber, uh, then uh, plastic and aluminium. And if any other expansion also you plan into this segment, uh, in any other segment. So basically, uh, the total capacity uh, which the expansion we are doing in uh, case of uh, lead is uh, approximately from uh, 300,000. Uh, so, okay, so uh, the capacity of uh, by 2026, the capacity of lead which is currently to 25,000, uh, we are taking it to around 300,000 tons. And in case of uh, in case of aluminium, it is currently 30,000 tons, which we are taking it to 48,000 tons. And in case of uh, plastic, it is currently 22,000 tons, which we are taking to 65,000 tons. So these are the capacity expansions which we are planning for the existing verticals. And there is a, uh, another vertical which we are talking about is rubber recycling. Uh, so, because since uh, we are not considering the capacity of rubber in our overall uh, capacity expansion, because rubber is currently being consumed, uh, the output of rubber is being consumed for the uh, recycling of the lead and aluminium. So, uh, uh, there will be capacity expansion in the rubber also, because we are in the replication mode. Uh, uh, we started from Ghana, now we are replicating the rubber recycling in Ghana, uh, uh, Senegal, Mozambique. Tanzania, all the African locations. So uh, there will be expansion of uh, rubber, but we are not considering that part of the capacity uh, expansion. Okay. okay. Got it. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Before we take the next question, I'd like to remind participants to please limit your question to two per participant only. You may come back in the question queue if you have a follow-up. Next question is from the line of Satendru Chakraborty from Chakraborty Family Office. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello. Congratulations on a good set of numbers. Now, my first question is really around the hedging mechanism. I think you briefly touched up certain aspects of it. Uh, if I sort of understand from your presentation, the back-to-back -back for score inventory is fully hedged. But my question is really in the future, for instance, when you have rubber, plastics, paper, there is no forward contract that you can do an LME or, or any other exchange, for example, the Chicago Board of Trade. So these will be really OTC contracts that you do on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So any thoughts around how do you want to play this uh, this hedging mechanism game going forward? Yeah, so uh, I think it's very clear that on lead we are already edged, which is around 80%, and we are already in discussions with NCX to start incorporating ADC-12, which is the major uh, alloy that we make, uh, to incorporate it in their uh, delivery mechanism. So these two uh, in future will be taken care of. But uh, apart from that, I think uh, uh, in other verticals like plastics, et cetera, Although there is no mechanism currently available where we can hedge it on exchanges, but uh, definitely we have tie-ups with OEMs where we uh, sell them forward contracts. So whatever deliveries I'm going to give to any OEMs in July, the prices would be M-1 minus basis. So whatever I'm collecting today, uh, so uh, more and more of that material uh, would go in the next month. So that is where you're probably doing natural hedging, uh, which we call it. Is the, the mechanism for that is already in place. Uh, so, so going forward, wherever there is no possibility of hedging through exchanges, we would incorporate this mechanism more and more. Okay, and just uh, one sort of follow-up on, so it is fair to say that you mentioned aluminium, that you will mm -hmm. potentially start to hedge this more, so it is fair to say that the EBITDA per metric ton will not be continuously dropping as we have seen for the last couple of quarters, right? But, okay. Uh, okay, the second, the, the second question I had was uh, really on the turnkey projects piece. Um, so I think this segment is performing brilliantly. Uh, I, I just wanted to hear from you what your outlook is uh, on this, uh, any margin revenue guidance you can give. And I also wanted to understand really very importantly, what is the market positioning uh, that Gravita has? Is there like no other integrated player who can provide uh, let's say, integrated turnkey solutions, or do you have other, uh, let's say, outside India players who can do that? Because I'm not sure that I understand the market structure fully well for, for this kind of service. Uh, 
Yeah. So, so basically, how we see our uh, our energy solution uh, division is basically as a support to our overall expansion plan. So, uh, even though you may not see uh, the overall uh, uh, revenues or gross margins coming from this, because sometimes around 80 to 90 percent of the total uh, revenue that we do is internal only. Uh, in terms of uh, where we are placed, actually, if you look at it, uh, uh, I mean, they, there are either European companies that are into this uh, who are providing these solutions globally, and then uh, in lead and aluminium, generally, uh, otherwise there are no companies available which can uh, make or produce uh, 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 sustainable, environmental-friendly equipments. Uh, so we we are uh, we are the only solutions. Uh, uh, Solution provider in the developing countries uh, who can who can provide this solution, uh, uh, which is uh, viable even if you make a smaller plant. So generally, if you go for a for a bigger plant, where around uh, you you are recycling, for example, for inlet around five to ten thousand uh, uh, tons per per month, then there are various options available from uh, European companies. But if you if you are anywhere in the range of one to two thousand tons per per month. There, there are very few options available, and there, that is where uh, Gravita is placed. But we don't see uh, it uh, only through that lens, uh, as I mentioned earlier. That we, for us, it's a, it's a in-house uh, 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 research center where we keep on improving our efficiencies, our yield, uh, in terms of uh, making it more environmental friendly. Uh, so that is, that is the major part we are, we are in this. Understood. So you don't suspect that you will provide this solution to any other competitor and then that sort of cannibalizes your sales. I was just no. trying to ask, so no, no, we, if it is really we, captively no, we, consumed? We constantly do this. We, uh, we, we, we supply okay. material to anybody who wants to, to go into lead or uh, aluminum recycling. So far, we have sold more than 60, uh, 60 turnkey solutions across globe. Uh, and the and the and we have a handsome margin of, margin of around 25 to 30 uh, percent uh, in the volume that we do externally. Understood. Very helpful, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kush from Electrum Portfolio Managers. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. So I had two questions. One was uh, why any reason for the tax rate being higher in this quarter at 14%? And second, the domestic scrap collection this quarter has been around 30% as the presentation, while in the previous quarters it has been in the range of 40 to 45%. Yeah, so uh, your first question is related to tax because uh, this quarter it was uh, Indian business were more profitable. Uh, as compared to it was what it was, it was earlier. So proportionately, uh, the tax rate uh, in India is slightly higher than the tax rate, average tax rate in the overseas business. So because of this, uh, the average tax uh, of previous year uh, is approximately 11%, against which this quarter we ended up uh, at 14%. So because of the slightly proportionately higher profitability in higher PBT, in India. So that's the reason for the tax. Uh, and uh, your second question was uh, about uh, domestic but uh, scrap availability, right? Yes. So part of that is, uh, part of the reason is that, uh, and why we did better in uh, India as compared to uh, the other parts of the globe is that Indian market was uh, giving better uh, premiums over overseas businesses. So we imported a lot of batteries as, because overseas scrap was cheaper as compared to Indian scrap during these uh, these times. So we imported more overseas scraps to increase the capacity, uh, to, uh, to increase the profitability and reduce the, uh, the Indian scrap. So th th there are opportunities of arbitrage uh, uh, available uh, time to time for us where there is a difference between Indian scrap. Sometimes Indian scrap is cheaper in those months uh, or those quarters, we buy more Indian scrap 
whereas uh, when the uh, overseas market crap uh, overseas market is uh, slower than we buy from overseas market also and and uh, in sales it's vice versa because indian markets were good so therefore if you look at our uh, uh, performance of indian uh, entities they have shown better results we have uh, we have sold more value added products uh, and we've done more revenue in india as compared to overseas so we have shifted a lot of scrap even from our own entities into india so that we can take uh, advantage of that arbitrage so we've taken a, a, a advantage of arbitrage both on the sales front as well as on the procurement front okay and just one last question so we as a company remain on the guidance of 25% growth in volume terms for the next three years just want to confirm that yeah so in terms of production definitely we will grow more than uh, 20 to 25% uh as i mentioned here also now that uh, sometimes there are there is arbitrage where it makes sense for you to uh, uh, not sell it to third party and bring it to india so so during those time in consolidation you will not see the sales uh, growth whereas the production volume growth would be there but you would it would not uh, reflect in the revenue numbers uh but in terms of profitability uh, our target of 35% uh, uh, profit uh, pad growth would al- always be there bottom line growth of 35% we are very uh, confident of achieving okay thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of hemant an individual investor please go ahead sir thank you for providing me the opportunity uh, as per one of our earlier calls Uh, we are supposed to actually uh, we have the target of uh, doubling our revenue over the next 3 years so but i hope it doesn't include the revenue from the existing verticals right uh, sorry from the new vertical it only includes the revenue from the existing verticals and the re- revenue from the i mean uh, new verticals will be over and above the uh, revenue of uh, of uh, after doubling it right no our our target i think the target that we have uh, mentioned earlier also is that we will we are planning to grow at more than 25% uh, in terms of volume on a year on year basis uh, for the next 3 to 4 years and around 35% profitability growth uh, cagr in the next 3 to 3 to 4 years so that remains our target even even now but as i mentioned uh, uh, earlier that sometimes the revenue growth will not reflect the volume growth uh, in the company so the production will increase but sometimes uh, when you can cons- when you will consolidate if there are arbitrage opportunities and we bring our material from our overseas plant into india it may not reflect in the revenue uh, in the revenue numbers but definitely it will reflect in the uh, profitability numbers but sir we just wanted to understand one thing like uh, in this call also you have told us that uh, you will be doing 650 crores of capex uh, and uh, 400 will be for the uh, existing verticals and 250 crores will be from the new verticals right so and yeah, uh, you had previously exactly mentioned that uh, the asset term will be 8x so basically uh, it translates to nearly 2000 crores of revenue okay from the new verticals right and uh, uh, in fy 23 i guess we did something around 2800 odd crores okay so uh, uh, i mean we are getting 2000 crores of revenue from the new verticals only mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. i think the profit should be uh, more than 2x uh, so so the revenue should be more than 2x by fy 26 right so these are the basic numbers what i'm sir sir what i'm trying to understand is like uh, the revenue growth which we are talking about by fy 26 it includes only the existing verticals and the 2000 crores of revenue will be over and above the uh, uh, revenue growth of uh, existing verticals right sorry can you come again like uh, 250 crores of uh, capex we have already planned for the new verticals right and the asset turn is 8x so we'll be roughly doing around 2000 crores of revenue from the new vertical itself right yeah yeah so and uh, we are planning some for say of it will come uh, in the third year some of the some of the capex would come in the third year so so revenue numbers from that capex may not reflect in that year itself so that is okay sir it is, it is, it is the capex okay. but for capex plan 
capex plan is different and the revenue uh, which is coming from that capex may be one one to one and a half year later so there is a lag period of one for, for the new vertical specifically there is a lag, more lag period because we are not making the equipments for the new verticals we are dependent on the third party for the equipment for the new verticals uh, in case of existing verticals we are making uh, our own equipment so in that case the lag period is very small uh, it turns to be 6 to 9 months we uh, uh, start the revenue generation from that capex but in case of new verticals it is slightly later so that's the reason uh, that revenue generation uh, will the effect of revenue generation will come slightly later uh, in this case in case of new verticals yes sir the, i got your point this you i think you have already mentioned previously but just trying to understand like 20% 25% revenue growth is from the existing verticals only right yeah, and, yeah uh, only existing verticals yes yes, yes and, right. uh, and uh, the uh, additional yes, revenue yes. the incremental revenue of 2000 uh, crores from the new verticals will be there over absolutely, and above the 25% Correct, right? Yes, absolutely. And, sir, yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, this uh, uh, capacity expansion from 2.5 uh, lakh metric to 4. ton 5. to 4.25 is it includes new as well as uh, existing, right? Only the existing verticals. Okay, so 4.25 uh, includes only existing verticals. Yes. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Harshit Shah, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, in the last quarter, uh, we have seen a uh, promoted uh, transferring uh, shares through bulk to some uh, investors. So, do we see any more such transactions in future? Second uh, thing, uh, in last con call, we also uh, 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 said that uh, we'll be doing some QIP. Uh, can you share the timeline of it? So, so basically, to answer the first question, there will not be any more uh, uh, dilution of the uh, of the stake by the owner promoter. Okay. okay. So, uh, so that is the first part. The second part is. Uh, QIP will only happen when we see that, uh, uh, I mean, so we have our internal debt uh, uh, to equity target. Yeah, so basically, earlier we planned uh, uh, QIP to fund uh, uh, the expansion which we are planning for, but later we realized that uh, the internal generation of the cash, which is uh, sufficient enough to fund the future capex and the working capital needs, because we are uh, we are going forward. We are uh, taking up the business, which is slightly better in terms of uh, working capital cycle. So we are bringing down the working capital cycle. So we don't see the requirement of the funds going forward. So we recently got some funding from the ESG fund, which is uh, which is uh, reducing our debt cost also. So uh, uh, we are funded from them and. So there is no point of uh, diluting at this moment. No further uh, QIP is planned in the near future, except uh, we get an opportunity of a significant, sizable, uh, the opportunity of m and So that will be the reason, only reason uh, to come up for the QIP in future. And just one more question, sir. Uh, you have said that you have transferred some inventory from abroad, Indian market, and we have processed here and sell it. India, but uh, we also have a plant at uh, Africa and other market. So, uh, if, uh, uh, why why we haven't uh, 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 processed it there and uh, sell it to, to India? Um, won't it be yeah. more cost effective? No. So, so as I mentioned earlier, there are certain times when there is an arbitrage in prices available in India as compared to overseas markets. Okay. So during those during those times we import that material into India because India India is giving better uh, better uh, realization for those products, uh, both in terms of value uh, value added at value addition also and sometimes as the commodity prices are also different in both these uh, geographies. So only during those times uh, we bring that material into India. Otherwise we sell directly to third party. So uh, so. Having geographical diversification also gives us these uh, these benefits from time to time. Yes, sir. I, I understood that. But I, my question is regarding if we have a good uh, lower cost material from Africa, 
can we process it there and sell the finished product in India when the arbitrage is there? Will so it be not cost effective? Yeah, so generally we do that, but in some cases, some of the value added equipment required are not viable when the scale is smaller. So, so okay. for example, Tanzania, we are only doing seven to 800 tons per, per month. In those countries, it is not viable to put up all the value added uh, equipment uh, for all the value added okay. products. So in those cases, we bring it to India. So the, the basic, uh, the basic uh, uh, process is done in those, those uh, countries only. Whereas the value, some part of the value addition is done in India. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rohit Mahirwani from Widget Global Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you for giving me the opportunity. My question is, if we see the interest cost, it has increased from 10 crores to 13 crores since last quarter. So I want to just know how much additional borrowings can we assume going forward, including both capex and working capital. So uh, on the debt side, uh, we are very conscious on taking the debt in terms of uh, we have made our own parameters to take the debt. So the debt parameter we have taken is uh, 0.75 of uh, debt equity, and uh, uh, so it should be less. Uh, 0.75 it should be less than 0.75 in case of debt debt equity, net debt equity, and uh, net debt EBITDA we have kept our own benchmark of 1.5. So within this parameter, we are consciously taking the debt, but uh, considering the cash flow coming in and uh, the capex plan and the working capital requirement, so we are not seeing uh, significant. We uh, higher debt in future. Uh, we are uh, expecting to be in the range of like uh, from a current number of around 370 crores to maximum of uh, 550 crores in the next two to three years. So this quarter was an anomaly in the sense that we imported a lot of raw material from overseas as compared to domestic material because that was cheaper for us. And also, we, we diverted some of our uh, products from overseas plants into India. So that is why you see a higher inventory uh, carrying cost, which will reduce in the, in, the, in the coming quarters. Okay, okay. I had one more question. Uh, as per the investor presentation provided by the company, uh, the company has signed MOU to establish battery recycling plant through joint venture in Oman. So by when can we expect this to be operational? So, by, uh, so it will be operational in one year, probably by first quarter of next year, it will be operational. Okay, okay. And Thank also, uh, there is one location, uh, Dominican Republic, which is showing in your global and pan-India operations. So, just wanted to know what are companies plan with respect to that. Uh, so DR is uh, a place where we are planning to put up a paper recycling plant uh, in the future. And also we will start plastic recycling in that country. So any number with respect to capacity? So it will take more than one, one and a half years to two years uh, to put up a paper recycling plant, but plastic can start a little early. So the Manager Republic is part of our uh, our new vertical business, which we are expanding in different uh, products. Uh, so one is one of them is paper recycling, which we are planning to start in uh, Dominican Republic. So we are uh, still under uh, evaluation, second stage of evaluation uh, feasibility at the uh, Dominican uh, Dominican. Uh, Republic to we so we have just because it's our business model to uh, start the trading first uh, uh, we start the trading of the scrap initially and uh, then we establish the uh, plant for the recycling so so we are in the process of trading of that scrap uh, at that location once it is successful then we start the uh, the capex and the uh, and the uh, setting up the plant in that location. So it will take another uh, one to one and a half year from now. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants to please limit your question to two per participant only. The next question is from the line of Devang Shah from AC Mehta Investment. Please go ahead. 
uh hi good evening sir uh, congratulations for a good set of numbers uh Thank sir you. i have uh, i have a one question that uh, there is a some kind of deterioration uh, as far as sequential performance of the company is con- concerned on you know all parameters revenue profitability and you know this volume growth why by basis we did extremely well so any specific reason uh, for that that is my first question sir so uh, there is a there is a slightly dip on the q1 q basis which you are talking about right Yes, uh, you know sequential basis. Yeah, so sequential basis, as we mentioned earlier, that a part of mm-hmm. the revenue was lost because of Vipar Joy. It affected the Mundra plant operations uh, to the extent of, uh, I mean, so the plant operations uh, was affected by around uh, 10 to 12 uh, days. And apart from that, we just recently started our aluminium plant plants. So uh, it would take some time to stabilize those plants. Uh, probably that is one of the reasons why. the numbers were not as good as we uh, we had expected and of course there is a drop in aluminum and plastic prices also so these were the three issues and all these three are uh, temporary uh, problems in our opinion so probably uh, by next quarter some of these issues will be resolved at the max next to next quarter all these issues will be resolved okay uh, one more thing sir uh, that we have seen uh, also you know dick- dip in a volume uh, especially sequential basis so that is a you know any specific reason on all three verticals lead aluminum and this uh, so yeah so so in aluminum uh, and lead basically if, you, if I, as i mentioned earlier that what we have done is that we have imported a lot of our material from our own plants into india uh, so because of that the revenue numbers does not show the total volume that we have done in production so it gets eliminated when you consolidate the data so that is why the otherwise in in production if you look at the production wise data we have done uh, better than uh, uh, the, the last quarter but it is not reflecting reflecting in the revenue numbers so it is one kind of intra transfer intra transfer that will not reflect in a number and revenue also right if i understood yes, correctly yes. absolutely and, absolutely and uh, last thing sir uh, we have seen a you know sequential uh, uh, you know decline in a pact that is you know bit uh, higher so that is only due to a tax uh, elements or any kind so, of you know so uh, yeah so basically uh, in the last quarter q4 there was a uh, additional one time income of 10 crore uh, which was there in this q4 of uh, fi 23 so that is not there in this uh, so that was the reason you see the higher numbers in case of q4 versus q1 this year so uh, that's the only difference otherwise uh, as uh, as already mentioned that there are two three things which uh, one is of course the vapor joy uh, impact uh, on our mundra facility so these are the two three things which uh, which is which is con- which is contributed or two new plants in uh, in uh, overseas we have just started and the expenses were there but we could not operate uh, so it is under stabilization period so uh, there is a reason we we are lower on the expected numbers but uh, uh, as compared to the last quarter but the 10 crore income which was exceptionally there in q4 that's the, the major difference in the uh, in the pack and last question sir uh, you know we will continue to have a you know margin that is you know something you know 8.5 to you know 7.5% that will be a range somewhere we can expect pat margin and you know as you have mentioned uh, as far as tax is concerned because indian taxes are high so what should we expect you know average tax rate going forward yeah so average tax rate should be uh, 11 to 10% 11 to 12% uh that's the average we expect uh, considering uh, there will be slightly m- more profits coming in from the overseas business so which is slightly lower in this quarter but uh, going forward it should be uh, back to the normal uh, so we expect to be in the range of 11 to 12% uh on the pat margin side we expect to be uh, so uh, the percentage could be lower higher but uh, we slightly focus on uh, part and ebitda and uh, slightly 25% roc minimum so that's the uh, more uh, relevant benchmark for us because we work in different geographies 
So working capital cycle is also different in uh, different cases like we discussed that uh, there is a business which is a uh, lower margin business, and uh, but there is no working capital in that business in, in case of India. So uh, that contributes higher, so uh, margin could be lower, but yes, we will be better on the return on capital. Uh, so that's uh, benchmark PF cap is 25%. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shiranjana Mittal from oh. Ratnataya Capital. Please go ahead. Oh, oh, hi. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. Just a follow-up on the earlier question uh, which was asked. So on this scrap collection front, you mentioned that since we imported more scrap because of this scrap is cheaper, uh, we imported more and hence the domestic collection was less. Is that correct? Uh -huh. Sorry, can you come? Can you can you just move into? So I so I was saying that uh, over domestic collection was less in this quarter. You mentioned because that was because overseas scrap was cheaper, so you imported more than uh, yes, yes, more than what yes. was collected domestically. So I just yes. wanted to understand uh, what is the difference between like the landed cost versus the domestic scrap? Uh, like just an approximate percentage wise, what would have been the difference? Five to seven percent difference would be there. I Five mean, if you, yeah, yeah. But uh, the thing is that it is a little difficult to 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 compare both these because then you have to see where we are selling it and to do who's to the customers that we are selling it because Indian scrap uh, mostly is uh, a tolling uh, business where the margins right. are fixed. Whereas when we import scrap uh, and we sell it in India, then the Margins increase because uh, uh, then you, uh, I mean, the Evita margins are much higher in those cases. Uh, so it's it's not an apple to apple comparison. Okay, so um, if I'm understanding it right, because it's because of value add, uh, the margin difference would be there between what is sold, uh, what is imported and then sold, yes. and versus what is. So, but uh, in terms of working capital, the working capital is lower in the tolling business. So when yes, you make these yes. decisions, you look at it in terms of uh, margins, just solely margins, or, or the dosi wise, how how it, what will be so, the impact? So, so so the so the basic basic criteria is to uh, to get the highest ROC. So if we are getting higher higher ROC by importing that scrap, even though the working capital cycle is higher, but the profitability is higher in that case, then we'll go for. Uh, for imported scrap, but if uh, the ROC is higher in the local in the the tolling business, then we go for the tolling business. So that is one criteria that we have kept. But it's not that we will uh, we will convert 100% of tolling business into. So we 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 can only play uh, 10 to 15% only here and there. More than that is not possible. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Pakaria from Lucky Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for taking my question again. Uh, you know, there was a previous question on the um, interest expense going up. Uh, uh, it's the highest in about four quarters now. If you could just give us a sense of what is your debt number uh, right now and uh, what should we look forward to on, in that uh, particular item? So, uh, current debt number is approximately uh, 375 crores. And uh, earlier, uh, net debt I'm talking about. And um, uh, the number... If you compare it with the March numbers, it is 314. So uh, it is increased by approximately 60 odd crores in this quarter. And uh, so reasons we have discussed that uh, there is a slightly, so there are, uh, because we have recently started the new capacities in Mundra and Chittur, so uh, we imported certain scraps uh, in anticipation of this uh, in capacity. So recently uh, we have started this capacity and the plants are under ramping up, so gradually it will reduce to the normal level. Okay. And uh, so the other thing that you mentioned was uh, this uh, 10 crore exceptional income in uh, Q4. I uh, just wanted to understand how would that get reported in the in the segmental uh, numbers. Last time there was a turnkey project stop line of about 11 crores in March quarter. This quarter, you also have again a 15 crore, 14.6 crore number. So, where where does that exceptional 10 crore sit in this, uh, which was there in uh, last quarter, and uh, in a, where so did it 10, sit in last quarter? 10, yeah. So, 10 crore income was related to the tax. Uh, it was a, uh, it was a basically recognition of the mat. So, it reflected in the tax itself. 
अच्छा लास्ट क्वार्टर यू सेइंग इज रिफ्लेक्ट इन द ओके क्यू क्यू फोर क्यू फोर इट वाज क्यू फोर मैन मैट रिकॉग्निशन सो दैट वाज रिफ्लेक्टेड इन द नॉट इन द एबिटा इट्स ओनली इन द अच्छा इट वाज ओनली ऑन द टैक्स साइड यू आर सेइंग बेसिकली ऑन द टैक्स साइड या द टैक्स नंबर वाज लोअर बट इन क्रो ओके uh i'll come back to you for more questions so thank you very much sure thank you the next question is from the line of vikash from akadri group please go ahead thank you uh one thing is our one of the customer is there the amra raja and they also one of the fully owned subsidiary is the amra raja circular solution is there which is also is a recycling business area when that any kind of the impact is come in the our recycling lead lead recycling in fact a customer we are directly dealing with amaraja battery to which we are having the direct contract for supply of our products as well as we are collecting the battery scrap from different owners of amaraja and recycling it and supplying back to them there will be the possibility and amaraja is also working on that that they will be putting up some recycling facilities down the line after 3 years so there is a the recycling facility they are putting up so that's the ability to that so but uh, the thing is that the overall opportunity in this case is uh, is pretty huge in the sense that uh, currently around 30 35% of the of the total uh, total scrap available comes to the organized sector whereas the balance 65 70% goes to the unorganized sector and with this new uh, battery waste management rules coming into picture we expect that majority of the scrap will now start coming back to the organized sector so there is a huge opportunity and uh, there is a huge compliance uh, uh, pressure also on all these battery manufacturing companies so uh, so just to to uh, to fulfill that uh, compliance uh, uh, commitment they they may plan to set up a battery recycling uh, plants excite has already done that but amara raja had earlier plan to put up that plant much earlier but now they have a little i mean kind of postponed it a little bit so so the i, I mean basically that will be only from the compliance point of view if they can find partners who can do it for them probably they will not uh, come into recycling and even if they do come into recycling there, there is still enough opportunity available for all the battery manufacturing companies in oh, sorry battery recycling companies in india to grow up at a very healthy rate keeping in mind the opportunity available Hello Mr Hasan does an answer your question As there's no response from the current participant we move on to the next question from the line of Vikash Mistri from Moon Shoot Ventures please go ahead Thank you for giving the opportunity Sir actually our sourcing is the main mode and how we are trying to build our a uh, mode in that regard and uh, from the perspective that uh, what is the concentration of institutional clients specifically Amra Raja in case if they are trying to set up their own manufacturing that's my first question uh the uh, amara raja sells and uh, for that matter all the other many uh, battery manufacturers sell their batteries across india on a pan india basis so the battery gets collected across pan india basis uh, so even if amara raja uh, puts up a plant they will put up a plant uh, in one location where they are uh, kind of manufacturing their batteries so but uh, what about the other regions from where they are they have to collect their, those batteries from uh, that is where they need partners so gravita fortunately has pan india presence we have plants one in north one in south uh, one in west uh, one in central uh, region of india so it gives us uh, uh, in terms of uh, overall efficiencies and logistic cost it gives us uh, uh, i mean advantage over others uh so even if they bring that plant that plant first of all will not uh, cater to the entire capacities available uh, for recycling in india uh then collecting that battery from uh, from say uh, north and bringing it back to south where their battery manufacturing plant is there would not be logistically uh, economical for them so they would need That's partners great. like us uh, that great sir but my question is that what is the concentration of those five uh, institutional players which who are giving sourcing uh, to gravita so in terms of in terms of uh, in terms of their plants uh, excite has plant a major plant in calcutta amara raja is in south luminous let me let me sir 
sorry to interrupt sorry. Uh, let me put it this way that uh, what are the top five institutional clients uh, percentage share in your uh, uh, scrap collection okay. from them okay Look, yeah, in fact, other than Amaraja, we are collecting the scrap from uh, various locations of SEZ, then IT companies like so of TCS, Wipro, Accenture, those kind of clients, and thirdly, from the industrial sources. So, by and large, our scrap collection is more or less equal in volumes from all these, all these institutional play players. Sir, what what top five players? What is the percentage it is? Like if if you consider uh, top five, one is the TCS, second is second is Accenture. Sir, can you place the percentage to that? So this is random because it, because the battery cycle is close to three three years. So sometimes TCS volumes will be higher, sometimes Accenture volumes will be higher, sometimes Wipro volumes will be higher, and sometimes SEZ business will be higher. So it normally varies on year to year basis. Any rough estimate, sir? Rough estimate by law to all are equal. Because these are companies are having different, different locations, more or less similar kind of industries and similar kind of volumes, data centers are every having similar kind. But if you be very specific, we are getting more batteries from Tata group of the companies because we are having a, a global contract with the Tata group of the companies and it's the exclusive contract. So if we if we say that a close to 20 to 25 percent batteries we are getting from these sources, from Tata group, rest will be distributed among four or five. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashit Koti, an individual investor. Please go ahead. तो थोड़ा थोड़ा घर पे लगे हो भगवान का ही प्रसाद है। कोटी और लाइन इज अनम्यूटेड प्लीज गो हेड विद योर क्वेश्चन। या माय क्वेश्चन है सर विद रिगार्ड्स टू रिसाइक्लिंग इफ यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट सोर्सिंग ऑफ मटेरियल फ्रॉम इंडस्ट्रियल यूजर्स आल्सो एंड एज्यूमिंग दैट मेटल्स व्हिच यू आर प्रोक्यूरिंग uh, passenger vehicles or commercial vehicles. Region-wise, if you have to consider major major concentration is from which area? Where do you pro procure more? And uh, from there, that place itself, you have a plant, or again, or else you have to transport it back to your plant in Jaipur. See, see, around around 80 to 90 percent of the total batteries 85 percent of the batteries are sold in this, these three regions south west and north and only 10 percent get sold 10 to 15 percent get sold in the in the eastern region and in all these three regions whether it is south we have a plant in south at Sittur, we have a plant in mudra uh, which is in west then we have a plant in jaipur which kind of covers the central region and we have a plant in uh, in katwa in jammu and kashmir which covers the north north region so region wise we have plant in all of the regions where 85% of the battery gets sold thank you the next question is from the line of mohammed hassan from fair deal please go ahead hello can you hear me yes, yeah we sir, can hear you sir. yeah uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, sir since i'm new to the sector i just want to know about the uh, new government rules about the recycling waste thing like e e-waste management thing new rule on the battery waste management e-waste e-waste management e -waste. not just the battery yeah basically all waste management rule whether it's e-waste battery waste tire waste the principally same epr principle polluter pays basis so there is one policy wherein uh, there is a responsibility on various stakeholders including producers dealers, institutions, and in different rules, you can visit details on MOEFCC website where the rules are already there. But in principle, every e-waste uh, generated has to be taken. A laptop producing company has to take back the laptop which they produce in year X, and with considering the life, they have to take back certain percentage of the uh, electronic item, whatever they are selling it or they have to give it to a recycler who will recover various metals out of that by different processes. And if they are not able to recover, if they are an importer, they have to cut 
certificate of epr from these recyclers so all epr rules are based on the same principle there are the fine lines which can be seen on the website of the ministry of environment and forest thank you very much ladies and gentlemen that was the last question for today i would now like to hand the conference back to the management for their closing co comments over to you members of the management for any closing remarks thank you everyone for participating in this call we are pleased to announce that we have begun the year on a positive note and we firmly believe that we are making steady progress towards realizing our vision to, of becoming the most valuable company in the global recycling industry we trust that we have addressed all your inquiries during this session however if there are any remaining questions please feel free to reach out to our investor relations team at go india advisors once again we extend our gratitude to all the participants for joining us and for your attentiveness to our updates thank you and have a great day thank you very much on behalf of mk global financial services we conclude today's conference thank you all for joining you may now disconnect your lines